Hello everybody, today is March 19th and we're doing government and security stories to start your week. Stories that you can tell your friends. And you should definitely share with your friends. T please tell your friends about Although this show. We, do in a, we live in a world where talking about the government with your friends has a 50% chance of alienating your friends. <laughs> nah. Or 100% if you don't subscribe to either. A or B. I just would like. Or you just get on a list. I would just like reasonable human behavior. That's all I want. Get us color. Human behavior, me, by uh, definition, is not reasonable. Right. <laughs> let, me, let me offer you a history book to show you that you will never get your dream, uh, even in Star Trek. Hmm. But uh, well, no, I, I got no. I can't translate that at all because this is not reasonable in my opinion. I mean, yes, there are some problems here, but if you put this magnifying glass on any social media company. Can you really tell me that it's different? The Reuters headline is U.S. passes bill of force bot dance to divest TikTok or face ban. That's the clickbait headline. But when you read the bill, it actually talks about websites and other things like that. Literally anything can be classified under this. But it also doesn't mention Meta or Facebook or Google or Apple or any of the other companies. People who that paid to get omitted. They have exactly the same data. Now, I did read this, the actual text of it. Because I was expecting, remember when we read the, the previous one we did the video on? Yeah. Where it was like, wow, this is crazy. That one didn't pass, luckily. This one probably will. But they do say that it has to be a foreign adversary government or entity, right? Majority owned, I assume. So like, it yeah. can't just be a website. So the president can flag anything, but it also has to be a foreign adversary government. So they couldn't attack us, presumably. Presumably. But the other thing about it that uh, Massey pointed out is that this doesn't go after the Chinese. This goes after anybody who hosts TikTok, mm. who are all going to be Americans. <laughs> huh. Is that because they did an end run around the Google, Google, the Oracle hostings? Like, all right, we'll just host TikTok on Oracle and then send a copy to the party. Well, I think it's because they don't have the reach, right? Yeah. What are they going to do to the Chinese? Mm. Sanction TikTok. them more? TikTok would be an amazing version of OnlyFans. TikTok is just like... Chicken. Just, chicken oh. discussion. <laughs> it's a homesteading video. My cats would love that. Yeah. They would be big TikTok subscribers. And we have the State of the Union address. Uh, it was pretty rambling and incoherent, but there were a few nuggets that we can pick out, one of which is a thing that... Obviously, all politicians should be terrified about because people are going to use it against them. President Biden calls for ban on AI voice impersonations during the State of the Union. Now, that's already a thing for the FTC when you're getting robocalled, but he wants to do it all. So I guess download your large language models now while they're still legal. Well, I think it's the how you use it right now, right? Yeah. Like if I wanted to make a Biden impersonation for a parody purpose, that's okay. I really like the Obama... And Trump playing the Call of Duty, those videos. Those are really funny. There's also one that's like discussing Jon Snow's parentage, and it's all the like past presidents arguing about it. I like how they kind of uh, gave them characters that don't really fit their real personality, but then that persisted through yeah. all of the creative videos. That was really good. And uh, the anti Musk sentiment in Washington is hitting a fevered pitch. Is this a product of that, or was did they think this was really a bad idea? You decide. FCC denies Starlink a low-orbit bid for lower latency. Agency says SpaceX craft could curb International Space Station operations. Basically, Musk is saying, all right, I've got a goal to get below 20 milliseconds of latency. To do it, we can get closer to Earth. Uh, the FCC doesn't want that because it's within 10 kilometers of the orbit of the International Space Station. Now, they'll pretty much know where these orbits are, so avoiding it wouldn't be that big a deal. The International Space Station does have to maneuver sometimes to avoid things. But they made the example of like, yeah, but what if we need to get up there in an emergency and you close the window because we have to wait for a SpaceX to fly by? I don't know how likely that is. Maybe enough that they felt the need to do this. I mean, we've confirmed last week that the ISS is leaking oxygen. <laughs> And That's they were like, fine. They're like, I don't worry about that. Do we need that to live? I don't but, think but so. But if there might be a satellite 10 kilometers that way, we can't have it. What if uh, what if Elon Musk says, hey, we'll just deorbit the satellites that might possibly get in the way of an emergency rescue mission because there's thousands upon thousands of them. That would be an okay compromise. That's true. It probably wouldn't even cost him that much money. Yeah. 
I don't know if I would trust him to do that in a timely manner, though. I mean, I mean, at this point, Musk can launch stuff into space by putting Mentos in a Coke bottle. It really wouldn't cost that much to put the thing <laughs> he, back in orbit. You know, he could also make the argument, uh, you're going to be on my spaceships going up there. I think <laughs> I can figure it out. <laughs> and here's some good news. It's some belated good news. It's not enough good news, but it is some good news. <laughs> the FCC has scrapped old speed benchmarks and says broadband should now be at least 100 megabit. I would actually be okay also with giving Elon Musk a pass on the latency at about 30 or 35 milliseconds because terrestrial DSL right now is very bad. Very, very bad. That is not 100 in both directions. That's 120. But it's up from 25.3. <laughs> That's a huge leap. 3 megabit is not even really good enough for a team's call of one at this point. <laughs> Just having to call with yourself, <laughs> chatting with the AI. Yeah. And the uh, story of the McDonald's ice cream machines is long and rife with drama. You should go back and look into it if you're not familiar with it. But now the FTC is getting involved. The FTC and the DOJ now think that McDonald's ice cream machines should be legal to fix. <laughs> they're peeling back the linoleum of what's happened here. And they're seeing exactly how what McDonald's did up till now wasn't illegal. But it was amazingly hard on the franchise owners who had very little recourse to do anything about it. And it was anti-consumer. That's the most if, important thing. You couldn't get your ice cream. If anything survives the fall of the American empire, I hope it's this story. Because I feel like it sort of perfectly encapsulates everything about our society. Also, pro McDonald's tip. The people, now I don't know any of that. I'm not a McDonald's person. I've never worked on an ice cream machine at McDonald's. But the people who do work on them and build the software that allows you to rescue them they claim that when these things go bad mold happens serious mold i can believe that and they might not get rid of all of it when they start serving you ice cream again i've always heard that about uh, juice juice machines at <clears throat> restaurants and hotels and stuff it's like don't drink that because they're probably not cleaned as often as they should be see also the story from week before last where the the local dairy queen guy made all of his workers drink uh the improperly clean oh yeah Ugh. Now, there's a man who's serious about <laughs> cleaning the nozzles. I mean, on the one hand, he shouldn't have subject his employees to that. But on the other hand, someone who runs his franchise as seriously as that, probably a good thing. I would tell you to just drink water, but you get your water from the same dispenser that you yeah. get your yeah. soda. They just don't put the syrup in it. So if there's mold in there, you're going to drink it anyway. And maybe the Coke can kill some of it. Well, usually the... the um the potable water stuff, like you can't screw that up because it's always pressurized and like you're not, there's nothing you need to clean for that. It's the ice that gets you. That's why I don't put ice in my drinks because it, it comes out of the machine cold. Yeah, but then it rapidly converts back to room temperature. Yeah, that's fine. By the time I'm, I'm done you, drinking it. You eat incredibly slow as well. I do, but it doesn't matter. It does matter. I don't, I'll drink a hot soda. I don't care. Comment in the chat. Ice or no ice? I guarantee there's no not many like you. It's probably all Germans who like no ice. There's going to be a comment, too, where uh, somebody starts paying attention to the ice. There will be little black flakes in your ice. Like, just get a cup of ice and then look at it really carefully and then just notice. You're welcome. <laughs> Tag us on Twitter. When <laughs> and... Uh, the Section 235, will we ever see an end to it? No. Maybe when they get their way of repealing it, but then you'll just have the other side trying to get it back. And now they are getting down to the point where they're saying that, hey, you can either have 230 and my surveillance bill, or you can have nothing. <laughs> Senator Durbin petulantly promises to destroy the open internet if he doesn't get his bad save the children internet bill. The, the Tech Nerd article here, I love Tech Nerd's new writing style or whatever this is, where they're just like, we're just going to lay bare. <laughs> just foul mouth. Yeah. And who's, the, who's the writer on this so we can maybe pay attention to that We next have time. got Mike Masnick. Well, good job. <laughs> but um, this is more of the same that we've discussed in the past. There's not, there's not really a lot going on here. But articles like this make me appreciate what was crafted into law in Section 230. And Tech Dirt has a pretty good understanding of what it's meant to do. It also makes me wonder if, if the Romans, like in the Roman Senate, they had to deal with people that were saying things like, well, you know, if we, if we, can't, if we can't put a few more centurions on the pier here, we should probably take down the aqueducts. And the CSAM Act is bad. It is, uh, I mean, obviously it does, doesn't really do that much for what it claims it does, and it basically just strips away all of our privacy. Uh, the tiny, tiny shreds that we have left. 
They're trying to pick them away. They're like they're trying to use that mechanically separated meat machine to strip <laughs> off every little bit of privacy and package it as a chicken nugget. And uh, here's a, an update to something we talked about last week. I don't know what happened here, but Team Blue must not have dropped off the correct duffel bags <laughs> to the correct addresses. Pentagon said to end plan for a two and a half billion dollar Intel grant, according to this report. I would love to be on that team's call. But it doesn't like this was not a well written article at all because it talks about Intel getting free money, but then it talks about well it doesn't matter because Intel is going to, going to get a massive government contract to deliver some things. Yeah, it almost seemed like the government was like, oh don't worry about that, we got you covered with the Chips Act. But then anybody else who's trying to get Chips Act money is like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's a lot. What about our piece? And did it, did it change to where Intel has to deliver specific things? I don't know. It seems like the, the federal government is getting tooled up into the whole advanced packaging thing. And that could be really good for the federal government. I mean, imagine if the, the feds can have some custom silicon developed at like a secret think tank under Mount Cheyenne. But then they just put that as a little tiny piece of tile into a multi-package chip so like they put a chiplet on an amd cpu or they put a chiplet on an intel cpu that'd be a reasonable solution for the government well the government is also in charge of our cybersecurity, and they always speak from a position of authority but when it comes down to the brass tacks how good are they at it <laughs> not very good according to the headline where the cybersecurity and infrastructure agency was forced to take two systems completely offline last month after an ivanti compromise so they definitely were not keeping up with their updates. The Avanti Compromise got a lot of people, and they claim they got it really, really early, and it only got two systems. What was on those two systems? They're not going to tell you. <laughs> sort of a mini version of Solar Winds, if you will. It's like, wait a minute, that's not very good either. And when they're not losing their servers, Sisa is, or Sisa is actually uh, very concerned about what's going on in gaming communities because clearly the next generation of terrorists are currently playing pal world You're too sweaty <laughs> department of homeland security is scouring gaming communities for extremist content <laughs> mm. i was going to mock this but then we had that really sad and disturbing story that's way later i feel like that might be a little bit of propaganda to push this yeah it did Could it be. was a little over the top wasn't it mm. oh and also tashera was just prosecuted and remember that the to share documents were released on the thug shaker discord <laughs> yeah. so they have a good reason to be monitoring discord other than what they're claiming here yeah. we often make jokes like the my friend's discord that someone's monitoring that and whenever we oh. post a vaguely spicy meme it's like our fbi guy's putting that in the folder now you got confirmation <laughs> yeah even though it's probably ai at this point right yeah, yeah. they don't they're not actively monitoring it unless they see <laughs> like three spicy memes in a row see also what happened to that kid that was commenting in a private chat on on uh oh on an airplane the spanish flight yeah, yeah. oh right yeah where he said he was gonna blow up the plane yeah. as a joke and then immediately got flagged they yeah. got him before he got on the plane wasn't it or like right yeah. after he got on the plane so that's real-time monitoring pretty impressive terrifying but impressive and the other thing that's impressive that one of my favorite things about donald trump is how quickly he will turn on you like he will praise you amazingly and then immediately just turn around and, and make a 180 and make no apologies it's so entertaining trump says that a tiktok ban would empower meta and slams facebook as an enemy of the people now, wait a That's minute. That's a bold move considering most of his voters are probably still on Facebook. But considering also that Donald Trump got this whole ball rolling <laughs> with banned TikTok. Remember that? Yeah. So I, he's not wrong about the Facebook thing. I think Facebook would benefit a lot from this. And Facebook is doing all the things that TikTok is doing, just not as well. But he's not <laughs> articulating it that way. Like, that's not what it's about. Apparently, uh, one of his good friends convinced him that they like some kind of investment in TikTok. You know, there's something in there where it benefits him. Yeah. So you can always count on Donald Trump to do what benefits him. And uh, his anti-China stance is probably what kicked off the whole TikTok thing. And he is doubling down on that for the next run. <laughs> the Reuters headline is Trump launched a CIA covert influence operation against China during his term as president. And Reuters has some details about that and what that looked like. And I, you know, if I was if I was Xi Jinping, I would be at least mildly annoyed. 
Except you would be doing the same thing. Yeah. Constantly. I'm curious uh, why they're releasing this now. Orange Man must be stopped. I guess, yeah. <laughs> it's been five years. And uh, every country is doing this on some level, right? And your own country, almost, I, I would say, no matter who you are, your own country is doing this to you. I don't know if it can be believed, but we used to have the thing where there was reasonable reporting on the internet before people realized that people were paying attention to that. And it was like the finger pointing and you could kind of read between the lines and get that. I'm starting to see that again from France. So like France is figuring out that there are paid people and sleepers there and they're like peeling back the linoleum. But they're, they're, it feels like they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater a little bit. But the same kind of thing where it's two countries doing the same thing at each other. But then some of the news coming out of France lately is like, oh, we raided this apartment complex and the entire fifth floor was people who had apartments just filled with computers making propaganda bots all day. It's easy. It's cheap. Yeah. They all do it. And they do it to their own people, which used to be illegal and was changed conveniently this century. And uh, the old, uh, I guess, the the P-Hub will be exiting yet another state. (laughs) This plays out the same way every time. So I better stock up, Texans. Texas can require age verification on adult websites, Fifth Circuit judges rule. And so a lot of the adult websites are like, all right, we're going to check if your IP address is Texas and we're going to turn you off. Do adult stores check ID when you go in? Not usually. I think, the, I mean, if, you know, they're going to be able to eyeball you. And if there's any question. <laughs> I guess, although, they, but I, I don't, yeah, like they don't like going into a liquor store. When I worked at a liquor store, we didn't. ID people until they tried to make a purchase. Is there an age limit on those items? Because hmm. I've just discovered that Meyer, which if you don't know American stores, it's just like it's like a Walmart, a grocery it's store, like a, yeah. a nicer Walmart. They now have those kinds of items. Yeah, like cough syrup was one that you had to be eighteen. When I was a kid, I remember I tried to buy sharpies for an art project, and I was seventeen and I couldn't buy it. You had to be eighteen. But does that apply to the adult items? I don't know. The strangest age check I ever triggered in college, I was buying eggs and duct tape. And they were like, I don't know why, but the computer says that you have to show your ID. And I was like, okay. What can, can it's you make probably a like out of a, eggs and... something to do with like a Halloween pranks and stuff. Or vandalism or something. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, maybe. Eggs can be quite damaging to property. Well, it was it was the groceries. I think I had toilet paper and other stuff in there too, probably. Toilet paper would be but, yeah. but then it was like Halloween. roll of duct tape and it was like, ding. And it was like. <laughs> That's weird. You've won a prize. <laughs> yeah, it's like I've never gotten this on duct tape before. You're telling us what you bought at Dollar General the other day, and I was like, yeah, that would send up a red flag at like any <laughs> other store, but Dollar General, they're like, this is not even the 10th weirdest order we've had today. <laughs> well, the war on crypto continues, and uh, at this point, uh, they've kind of accepted it. we got the ETFs now. I think the money managers are firmly in control, but there is the whole anonymity thing, and they do not tolerate that. Bitcoin fog crypto mixer found guilty of money laundering and jury fines. So this article really doesn't dig too much into the exhibits and the arguments from trial. I was really expecting the founder to have said something like, yeah, we're going to, you know, do some amazing criminal stuff. Kind of like what happens with the, the fully encrypted Android phone where the guy that invented it was bragging that you could do drug deals and manage your illicit empire from it. But there didn't seem to be very much of that from this at all. This just seemed to be a thing where it's like, I want better privacy. We're going to build this. And the, the dude seemed like he was fairly careful. But they did prove that there was some money laundering going through it. But he was like, hey, I don't, that wasn't me. I can't stop it. I don't, I didn't know what you knew. Doesn't matter. Also, that guy's name was Roman something that starts with an S. There's another lawsuit or a trial, not a lawsuit, criminal lawsuit against another guy operating a Bitcoin mixer who's also named Roman S. Hmm. Huh. That'd be really confusing in grade school. It's the local cash uh-huh. and the simulation. G- this is plenty of fodder for the next GTA too. Hey, it's your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> no, the next GTA it's is going to be uh, in the American South. Uh-huh. Remember the trailer? Oh, uh-huh. yeah. And good news. We're not going to be invaded by aliens. And you can trust this. Don't question it. Just trust it. <laughs> Pentagon Review finds no evidence of alien cover-up. We've investigated ourselves and determined that we have not done anything wrong. Now, it said unequivocally there is definitely nothing of extraterrestrial origin. But it didn't say anything about interdimensional origin. Also, it's they claim point. a 2% unexplained rate. Yeah. They say that they can explain all the 
various crazy videos that we've seen. And they can say you know, those are definitely man-made craft, but there's 2% they're not sure. Neat. Release the 2%. And the European Parliament have been passing a lot of new rules for tech, and this is the latest one. Deal on EU AI Act gets the thumbs up from the European Parliament. So basically you're going to have uh, various rules about what you can put out there depending on the context of how you're using it. You have to have, you know, like the whole watermark thing and make, getting it tested having them approve it and so forth. It's really just the government trying to control something that is completely outside their control without these kinds of draconian laws. Oh, one thing in the Bitcoin Mixer story that was alarming is a lot of the language and arguments that they used in that court case. You remember Proton Mail? How they had forced them to give up the keys or to build a thing in for the back door? Sorry. It was uh, the same kind of a thing. It's like, okay, for... Like somebody could use Proton Mail for in, uh, criminal stuff. Like, does that mean Proton Mail has to build a back door and a way to deal with it? Because a lot of the same arguments would hold up with that different product. Well, even worse than that, they didn't mention it in the article, but we have an article coming up in the social media section about Facebook. Yeah. And Facebook is doing exactly that kind of thing we with Facebook do, Pay. Yeah, we want to do end-to-end -end encryption and not monitor it. And the feds are like, whoa, don't do that. That makes you liable. And it's like, no, what? Because we can demonstrably not know we are now liable? Yes. No, it's because they mm -hmm. don't get to know. Yeah. That's why you're liable. And the EU is also going after the VOPS, very large online platform. And uh, if you have over 100 million users, right, or 100 million in sales or something like that, it makes you a VLOP. And the first VLOP to come under the Stop crosshairs, VLOP, 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 <laughs> for uh, uh, online retailer is not Amazon. AliExpress is the first online marketplace to face a DSA investigation by the European Union. AliExpress is pretty well known for some shady, yeah. dark patterns and bait and switch i've never used it because i'm a little nervous about giving it any sort of payment information i mean i'm also nervous about giving amazon my payment information but that yeah. ship has sailed so yeah what am i gonna do man can you imagine an amazon hack that's like the roku hack we're gonna discuss later and apple is <laughs> the adherence to the rules that apple is doing here is just <laughs> hilarious because once again they follow, not even, I wouldn't even call this the letter, right? <laughs> no. They've, they've sidestepped the letter, the spirit, and everything else, and just sort of made up their own rules. Apple's going to allow iOS app downloads direct from websites in the EU after you click 13 things. And after the developer goes through an incredible number of hurdles, and it only counts for uh, certain ones, right? Like certain developers are probably never going to be able, oh, here we go. You have to be in the developer program, incorporated in the EU. Uh, your location cannot change. You have to have an app that has more than 1 million in the first year of installs. Only from that developer account. Look, I mean, look at all this. There's like 20 bullets there. Be responsible for handling governmental and other requests to take down the listing of apps. Nobody's going to do it because it's going to be too much trouble. And some other software like, you know, Microsoft Office is so packed with telemetry that it literally just by existing violates these rules. <laughs> the EU's use of Microsoft 365 found to breach data protection rules. It's not because when you hit save, it goes to a cloud server, not in the EU. That actually does happen in the EU. But all the telemetry and data about the files you're editing and everything else, that goes to non-EU servers. And nothing Oops. asks your consent. <laughs> and there's no opt-out. Just like everything. So it's inherently against the rules they came up with. That's hilarious. That's the new pattern. It's like it doesn't ask for your consent and there's no opt-out. Just like the start menu. I would like to not display ads on the start menu. And the options that you have in the UI are fewer ads or relevant ads, not no ads. Clearly. 
Or yeah. web results. It's like, what kind of web res- do you want? You want adult enabled web results or just regular web, web results? How about no web results? Can I turn off? No, you can't. That's that's not an option. And that's not the only company whose main product just inherently destroys privacy. Worldcoin fails to get an injunction against Spain's privacy suspension. So Spain said, no more privacy. You're violating everybody's privacy. We can't allow this. They tried to say, hey, no, we're not doing that. Look. And they looked at it and they were like, this is exactly what we said you were doing. You're definitely doing that. Also, the thing, like, the more I look at it whenever we see these articles, I'm always like, it looks like something out of Portal. It's not. Like, there's nothing about it that is, there's no utility there. Like, that's such a dumb form factor for it. Yeah. And, you know, I saw, I think I saw another headline that maybe Sweden was also experiencing this. I don't know how widespread this is, but at least France. The French government says it's being targeted by an unusually intense cyber attack. This comes, we talked about this, that this started happening immediately after Macron was like, I'm done. There's no red line. We're, we're going to, we're going full, uh, we're gonna, whatever Ryan Metal needs for munitions manufacture, we're going full tilt into this thing. And then th- this started and it hasn't huh. let up. It's so weird. Weird how that happens. So weird. And here is maybe the end of this story because the way that it ended did not leave any questions as to the truth of this matter. <laughs> Craig Wright is not Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto, a judge has declared. This was uh, this could have been reality television. You see the thing where it's like, so-and-so is not the father. That's what this, <laughs> this court case was, basically, which is good. What did he base that on? Well, according to him, all of the documents submitted were forgeries and everything that man said was a lie. Wow. The most amazing thing was... It's the a bold strategy. They caught them forging a document while he was on the stand. Because he was like, wait, you said this. This contradicts the other thing. And he's like, no, no, no. There's another document that explains that. And then he was like busy creating it. <laughs> That's like doing your homework as the teacher is like pulling <laughs> yeah. the papers up from your classmates. So what that means is, if this judge were to be so motivated, this could result in criminal perjury charges. Because he was under oath during all of this. Did you lose the cursor? Uh, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. The uh, How many years has the Ukraine war been going on Two point at this something. point? Yeah. So a lot of the knee-jerk reactions in the beginning are now getting rolled back. Europe lifts sanctions on Yandex co-founder Arkady Voloz. Voloza. 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 And his defense, he doesn't live in Russia anymore, and he has been speaking out against the war since its beginning. Don't know if he made it out with very much money, though. Probably not. Well, well maybe then, not for his standard of life, but... Maybe now he can earn some more, because mm. he's going to lose his sanctions. And here's a... A dark reality in the UK. Man, I would be so upset about this. Yeah. God, that would be infuriating. If you saw somebody doing this, like, wouldn't you have a visceral reaction to, like, just go and attack them? Yeah. Because it's, it, it doesn't... Maybe this is where Kate is. <laughs> oh, you think she's responsible <laughs> yeah. for this? You think she's in the... Oh, no, no. I mean, the UK, right? Yeah, so she's, she's the future queen of England. She's operating some sort of, like, black program where she's... Yes. Attacking the fire. When she's not night. photoshopping her family photos, this is what she's doing. Does she do this in human form or lizard form? Yes, both. She's a busy lady. Attacks on UK fiber networks mount. Operators beg the government to step in. Once, very early in my career, I was troubleshooting an issue where the cameras would cut out every, like, it was randomly, but it was usually at night, and it was usually during a specific time of day. And it turned out the guy that was employed to um, watch the warehouse at night was peeing on the wire stand. Oh, well, that's not what's happening here. <laughs> what's happening here is people are going down into the underground wiring bundles, selecting one specific ISP's fiber line. So they know which one it is and clipping it. Or in some cases, they just set fire to the whole thing. So what some of the spectrum contractors have been caught doing here in America <laughs> with competitors, it's like, oh, you, you're not going to buy the crappy cable internet anymore, huh? Oh, it'd be a shame if something happened to this line. <laughs> And in Canada, they have a similar bill to the ones that we're having where they just don't want you to be saying stuff online that they don't like. And they're offering some pretty insane punishments if you do that. And they've sprinkled in a little bit of pre-crime into this. (laughs) So it's really insane. The uh, Toronto Sun headline is Goldstein says that the online harms bill is an assault on free speech and civil, civil, civil liberties. 
So. There's actually a section in there that says that if the judge suspects you of offending again, they can put you on house arrest. If they think that you're going to post another meme that's a little bit over the line, sorry. <laughs> you have to be detained. But uh, you should go read the details of that. It's, it's crazy. Each citizen is only allowed to make another citizen, up to 5 million other citizens, chuckle with their meme. You've exceeded your quota for the year. You can post no oh. more memes this year. And God forbid you make them uncomfortable. <laughs> and uh, Nigeria is having a bad time with inflation. And you might be saying, hey, man, everybody's having a bad time with inflation. There's just considerably worse. And they're trying to find a scapegoat. Finance executives were arrested in Nigeria for allegedly destabilizing its currency. Two executives have been held against their will for over two weeks. Gresham's Law. If you can get stable money and trade unstable money for it, you will do that. It makes sense to do that. But the Nigerian government is not into that. Because it continues to devalue their currency. And China is... uh, We've learned that they are actually building the chips... They've managed to get the 2020 level AMD performance, which is kind of impressive in a year or two. But that's not enough. They want more. China's third big fund reportedly set to inject $27 billion to counter U.S. chip restrictions. Neat. Maybe they'll get up to 2022 next year. I thought that, I mean, I read this article and the whole time I was thinking, this is a very American strategy for just dealing with this problem. It's just like, hey, we're going to print a bunch of government money and give to our local companies and hope they figure it out. Yeah, but they've got deflation. So the money printing, that's fine. (laughs) (laughs) If we can stop the deflation, that'll be good. So yeah, print. But apparently the only uh, job markets in China right now is some chip companies and like an amazing surplus of defense spending all of a sudden, Mm. which is a little worrying if you're an island near them. (laughs) And we often talk about when tech companies go into India, they're all gung ho at first. And then India is like, no, we control all of this. If we tell you to take it down, you will take it down. And everybody agreed to it. That's why you get stuff like this. YouTube blocks access to Fifth Estate story on the killing of uh, British Columbia Sikh activists on India's demand. YouTube blocked this everywhere, not just India, everywhere. <laughs> and their search gets worse and worse. I think they said you could get it in the U.S. I think they might have done it like they blocked it, but then they put it back. Yeah, they put it back. Yeah, because like, <laughs> there's backlash. After people noticed. That's usually like... It's, that's and then how, you lose all your views. That is how they operate. It's like, let's do the laziest thing possible. It doesn't matter, like, what's right. We'll just do the lazy thing. This one, every you should all read this one. This should be your fury of the week. Yes. My God, this makes me so <laughs> angry. And what makes me the most angry about it is that I, when I think about it, when I use my inner monologue, I realize there's nothing I can do about it. You can't opt out. And there's no, there's, you, you can't say no. There is you, no option. You can pull, with a complex series of adjustments, you can pull the radio out of the car. And that will stop it just on that effect. For but now. Other than that, you got no, I think if you plug in a smartphone, you lose that though, right? Because yeah. they're probably just going to run through. You're, you're going to pay for the data. <laughs> Automakers are sharing consumers' driving behavior with insurance companies. So this is a long article, but this is somebody who got their their driving record from LexisNexis of all places. The people that store the the law records like that have to do with like small claims court or if you sue somebody or federal court or whatever. Yeah, your car is reporting to a database that LexisNexis has bought that now insurance companies can buy and they can use that without your knowledge or consent to figure out if they want to insure you. General Motors is who they're talking about here. I'm guessing that they all do it, but General Motors has gotten caught. They have OnStar, and there's apparently a thing that you can sign up for when you buy the car that it's like OnStar telemetry, extra stuff. You don't have to opt into it. It turns out the dealership gets a bonus for everybody they opt into that, so they don't ask you. Yeah. They just opt you in. And 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 actually, they will call and harass you to bring the car in for a free servicing if you unplug it. Stupid cars looking better by the day. It's like, hey, can you bring your car in? No. And nobody's ever going to sell a car that doesn't have this from now on. Yeah. Yeah. All cars. And probably all cars since, what do you think, like 2012 or so? The really insidious thing is that the insurance industry will lobby Washington and say that anybody that doesn't have this is a danger to drivers and Mm -hmm. we really need this. And then it will be illegal to tamper with it. Now, one guy uh, 
it took some steps to try to get around it. And it turned out they simply would not insure him. He had one of the really souped up Cadillacs and apparently he was having a lot of fun with it. So he had to go to a private insurer, pay double what he could. He couldn't get any major insurance company to cover him. What the, I mean, most people probably won't know about that, but I would think like that would eventually affect the sales of the cars where people are like, I don't want to buy a fancy sports car. What are you going to buy? You buy something that is more likely to get insured. Oh, but if, but I mean, you could still drive it crazy. Recklessly. For for the people that have the uninsurable Kias and Hyundais, that's also like saying just, you know, just have more money to buy another car. Right. But I'm saying like, if you're someone like, if your options, like you're going to be monitored either way, but if you're worried about the insurance costs, like, wouldn't that mean you'd go to a car that's like, quote, more... In, a, in our driverless, or whatever. in a driverless future, you literally it won't be illegal <laughs> to drive a car, but you're not going to be able to afford right. to drive it's, a car. Uh, Ultimately, it's going to get to that. But the crazy thing is, General Motors is the one who's diming me out here, but right. they're also the one that sold me the car based on how fast it is. Right. So they're telling me the, the Corvette has a launch mode, right? <laughs> so you can. <laughs> Continue, but that's absurd. But you continue. can, so, you know, like when you're taking off, you you want to get the RPMs up before you start, right? So the launch mode lets you boost the RPMs and get it running in neutral before you let it take yeah. off. So you get the, so that, but then acceleration instances, hard acceleration, they immediately go to the insurance companies. Like, Look what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> like we built this feature. And then we tattle. That's what I'm saying. Like, why would I buy a Corvette if I can't go fast in it? What's the point? And Stanford University is the third most expensive and thus prestigious university in the United States. And uh, they're supposed to be at the bleeding edge of all this stuff, right? Stanford University failed to detect ransomware intruders for four months. 27,000 individuals had data stolen, which included names and social security numbers. And they weren't real quick to tell anybody, which is supposed to be against the rules, right? Here's some good news. If you are, uh, you know, maybe you're looking for some gig work, you like to work outside the box, just hack Google's products. Google paid $10 million in U.S. dollars in a bug bounty rewards uh, last year. However, that was for 632 people. So it sounds amazing, but then it's like, wait, 10 million divided by 632? Eh. Yeah, but if you're one of those people, yeah, bigger piece of that pie, right? And Roku had themselves a little bit of a hack. And unfortunately, most people, I imagine a lot of people register for Roku and then they're like, throw the device away and they forget about it. They don't realize that their account is still out there, possibly with payment information. Over 15,000 hacked Roku accounts sold for 50 cents each to buy hardware. So basically, if you put your credit card in your Roku account, you can use your Roku account to buy more Roku account. And they don't really look too close at the address or where they're shipping to or media to download or anything like that. So or the fact that they were just recently hacked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're telling their shareholders, wow, people are using our service like crazy these days. Look, they're look buying new devices. Things. I think Roku might be in their death throes. And if you're doing some self-hosting, maybe you got a you know a VM or something out there facing the internet, you might want to think about this kind of thing because they're always looking to get into it. <laughs> Spinning Yarn, a new Linux malware campaign targets Docker, Apache, Hadoop, Redis, and Confluence. Basically, just because you're using Docker doesn't mean you can never, ever update. These are container escape routines and container escape utilities. You compromise the container, then you break out of the container, compromise the host, then you're there for good. And they're doing it. It's a little, little, little scary. And we've got another Linux malware, and this one is an old malware that's come back for a, 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 it's like Mike Tyson. It's coming out of retirement. <laughs> Linux variants of Bifrost Trojan evade detection via typo squatting, VMware. So if you monitor all your outbound traffic and you don't look too closely, it looks like you have devices that are phoning home to legitimate VMware URLs, except for the domain has a couple of typos in it. So you really have to be paying attention to catch it. They mentioned that this one was VFware. Calling home for the command and control at VFware. So, yeah. I mean, if you if you were looking at it, that would get you. But if you were monitoring it with string patterns, you could catch it. 
And Microsoft, if you recall, they were hacked and they were a little tight-lipped about it. And maybe one of the reasons they were a little tight-lipped about it is because it was really bad. Microsoft says Russian hackers stole source code after spying on its executives. Yes, this is the same story that we reported a couple of weeks ago. It's like, don't worry about it. It was just a dev server. They did target our executives, but it's basically okay. No, they got the source code. So they'll be able to use that to look for vulnerabilities. And they're now seeing that they are trying certain things that they could only know about based on the fact that they now have that information. Oops. And we often see ransomwares go after schools. And you might be wondering, like, why? What what good is that? Children don't have money. But it turns out that I guess they're playing the long game here. Hackers are targeting a surprising group of people, young public school students. So they're saying that like the easiest, the most obvious one is the public school students aren't monitoring anything. So if you create accounts in their name, they probably won't know about it. But the other crazy thing is Schools have so much data on the students, which is another thing that we need to fix. Like what antidepressants you're on. Or if you were involved in some sort of like, uh, you know, uh, sexual assault or something like that. The school has those records. If you were on drugs at school, that kind of thing. So they're saying they're going to sit on these. And in five years, when you're out there making money, you're out in the world, they're going to be like, hey, how would you like all your social media friends to find out about what happened when you were 15? Because we've got that information. I'm imagining a scenario where that, that happened to me, but it would just be like, do you want everyone to know what a loser you were? <laughs> <laughs> we already know that. <laughs> we hacked into the uh, the grocery store and got the cheese counter video. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that video. I just walked away. I wasn't expecting to talk to anybody. <laughs> and uh, schools... They take a lot of your information. They do a poor job of protecting it. Guess who else does that? Hospitals. Department of Health investigating United Health hack after unprecedented cyber attack. This is just going to keep on going for weeks and weeks and weeks because they were down for two weeks. Like if you needed your insulin in that two week period, you were basically SOL. Insulin's not important, right? You don't need that. Unless your pharmacist took pity on you. And it turns out that the scope of what they got is probably a lot crazier yeah. than they ever let us on to. So, not great. And finally, uh, this is a beautiful real-world analogy for everything that we're talking about with these online bills. Like, this is literally how they want it to work, and this is literally how they will treat it when they get your online backdoors. Massively popular safe locks have secret backdoor codes as has been the case since the 1970s. Senator Ron Wyden has figured this out and is like, wait a minute, you mean citizens just can't, we can't, this, this is why we can't have nice things. Government can't use these. So there you can, though. Two companies, one of them was Chinese and the other one was American. They both did the same thing. But here's the crazy part. I mean, well, that's crazy enough in itself, right? You're selling me a safe that you can get into and anybody that works for you knows that they can get into it. But not only that, the government figured it out and started putting out government notifications like, hey, don't buy this brand. Mm. But they didn't tell us. So that makes me think that the government kind of liked having that information. They like to know. Yeah, it's weird how that works. It also works that way for digital stuff too, like your email or Proton Mail or your digital locker or OneDrive or G Drive or Discord or basically any online service. Except the ones that explicitly do end-to-end -end encryption without government interference. And how are they treating those right now? Hostile. Not well. <laughs> Very hostile. See, also Proton Mail. Trying to shut them down because they're little guys. They're going to have a harder time with Meta, obviously. But Proton Mail, really, it was not a fair fight at all. But think about this. How OP will it be in the apocalypse if you know the backdoor gun safe code? Your looting is going to be so much more productive. That would be an interesting mechanic in a game. I should patch that into Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I think Cataclysm or uh, what's the other one? Zomboid. Mm -hmm. Where you could have like different skills. You can't hack the safes in those games. But you have to have the skills to do it. I don't have those skills. We should revisit Zomboid. You should revisit us tomorrow. With more stories for your week. Goodbye.